another argument against MAP that's that's often posed is well, uh, why is there not an increased risk for those working or living where the organism would be uh, would be the most present? For instance, well, look, we, we don't know. It's a very good question. We don't know, but there is a hell of a delay in, in infection. But most recently. Um, with, with the data from Germany, it looks like house pets like dogs carry MAP being published and is detectable. Up to like 15% of dogs that you have at your home may be giving you a familial Crohn's where they had just a single familial dog, you see, which infected all the three children. So I, I don't think the data is, um, is strong uh, to say that just because you have been working in a farm you should have more infection. However, there is one piece of evidence from Iceland where there were no sheep with MAP. And after they were brought in uh, in the early part of um, the last century, that's when Crohn's epidemic began. Until that time, there was no MAP in Iceland. Uh, Dr. Van Kroenigen, he had major concerns uh, about MAP and it's potentially causing Crohn's disease. And most of these concerns are sort of still brought up today. Um, one was that the pathology of Crohn's and Yoni's are different. Um, two is that there's inconsistent detection through molecular or culture methods. Um, inconsistent results by serology and uh, lack of a zoonotic risk, which is the farmers. Mm -hmm. I think if it was consistent, we wouldn't believe it, let me tell you. They're not arguments. It's just different diseases, you know. Um, the, the same disease in different animal models works in the same fashion. So uh, if you have um, an animal model where you may infect uh, mice with leprosy bug, the histology is different to what it is in humans. But that does not mean anything in terms of what the argument is being brought up. If it was identical, we wouldn't believe it. That's how it is. That's nature. It's a different, in, uh, different tissues, different immune responses. So I, I don't think these are leads worth following. I mean, one of the strongest bits of evidence also that a microbiologist quoted is this. There are no non-pathogenic mycobacteria. It is a pathogen. And until it is proven not to cause Crohn's disease, everyone should be treated for MAP. Do you like the quote? It's good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, we treat Helicobacter and so innocuous. And if you don't, you get sued. We've had suits through Britain, we've had suits in Australia, because it caused stomach cancer. And it causes stomach cancer in such a rare number of patients. And yet we treat it, we're so afraid of it. And the fact is, again, MAP is a pathogen. Until you can prove, until the medical society can prove that it doesn't cause crimes, treat it. And on top of that, why not address it in, in the, at the source as well? You can't really address it at the source because it's in a feral population. So you may kill off all the cattle and start again, and the feral population is spread back to it, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. you want to control as well as possible. I don't think animals with terminal MAP uh, infection should be culled and put into the food chain as they are now, and sold as hamburgers, but um, I, I don't think you're going to eradicate it simply by shooting 200,000 sheep, as we did in Victoria several years ago, to cull Yoni's disease. Is it in subhuman primates in the wild, or are those? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And they develop gastrointestinal disease. Look, I'd have to look up the histology of it, but even chickens can carry it. So, dogs do, as you know, in yeah. Germany. Um, what about the uh, the sort of new understanding of how um, Remicade and anti TNFL for drugs are working, and that maybe they're causing uh, cell death? of the uh, immune cells that would contain yeah. MAP. There are three papers published on this that Remicade, I'm not sure about other anti-TNF, but I'm fairly sure about Remicade. Remicade binds to TNF on the cell surface and causes apoptosis or death of the cells that actually have, have MAP inside them. So in a way Remicade is an antimicrobial agent because it knocks off the infected cells. And not only that, it probably works in a circulating TNF as well to, to bring down its effects more distantly from the area of infection. And that's just early thinking, but we do know that there is cell death caused when you have MAP infected cells 
that are producing TNF alpha. Um, how are genetics playing into into all this? I know there's some evidence that not too yeah. is it implicated in intracellular bacteria recognition. Well, there are a couple of these interesting views. Certainly, it makes sense that if you have a genetic predisposition not to be able to clear MAP, then you'll have an ongoing chronic infection. And chronic granulomatous disease is, is an interesting one because if you stimulate immunity in these patients um, and with um, uh, appropriate means, they lose their Crohn's-like illness, chronic granulomatous disease, probably because they develop chronic granulomas secondary to, to either a specific infection which has been found or bacteria that can enter the, the lining. And you simply increase the, the power of the white cells and the number of the white cells, um, and, and chronic granulomatous disease disappears. It, it is a differential diagnosis of Crohn's, but it occurs mostly in affected children where it's found by genetic means. So there are white cell deficiencies that cause a granulomatous like Crohn's disease, and there's a whole study that I'm going to look at. It's a nice parallel. The other interesting thing is that in, in normal cattle, if you inject MAP into them, they develop an immunodeficiency, and that's been nicely shown. In cattle that were totally free of MAP, if you inject MAP, the white cells don't work very well. So it actually induces its own environment for survival. It's quite neat. Very clever little bug. Uh, why don't steroids worsen Crohn's disease, at least in the near term? Well, because they turn off the inflammation. Uh, steroids do, do cause the growth of extracellular mycobacteria, but they don't do this in MAP. So they will improve the inflammation, but will not increase growth of MAP. But it takes such a long time to grow anyhow. Yeah. Um, are, are some of the genes that are associated with Crohn's, are finding more and more genes being associated with Crohn's? Are they I think compatible? there are 30 now that have been found. But you know, finding a genetic predisposition, I don't think plays a very important role. Because you can't change your genes. Unless, of course, you use Levi, you use Levi genes. <laughs> no, I think it's, it's wasted research in that area. I mean, if we had a test that said, of these four children, this one has a very strong genetic predisposition, then well, what would we do? Stop them drinking milk, eating meat, and all foods to prevent the, the infection getting in? Don't drink the water. Do you and close a child in, in some sort of a room which is specially built to prevent map infection. Or do bubble, we bubble boy. Bubble Maybe boy. Seinfeld go live with So I think we should concentrate our efforts in trying to A, detect the bug and B, kill it or control it. You know. But to spend such an enormous amount looking for genetic predisposition to bad driving, excuse me, <laughs> that's what we're doing with, with these genes. Um, and they can't be the cause because it's it's increased so quickly. No, the genetic um, mutation rate has been is not able to explain the rate of rise of of, um, of Crohn's disease, and I think that's again a closed case. Yeah. Um, what does it a number of papers written. Yeah. Uh, well, this is sort of besides MAP, but some researchers are currently trying to map the genome of the human microbiota, microbiome. Um, how much might this contribute to the treatment of IBD? I don't know, but the human flora, uh, whether you look at the genes or not, probably plays a protective role. It certainly plays a protective role in other infective agents that cause colitis, for example. And the best example is Clostridium difficile. If you deplete your flora by having antibiotics, you're far more likely to infect with a bug that will give you chronic inflammation. Now, MAP is slightly different because it actually enters the tissues, whereas C. difficile rarely so. But if you did have a strong flora that uh, would prevent you from catching MAP, to extent where it's inactivated before it goes into your tissues, uh, 